Hey everybody and welcome to another tutorial video. In this video, we begin our redoing of my old bar graph with error bars Excel tutorials. These tutorials came out the first part of my foray into tut tutorial uh, making, January 2019. Now, my, my video making or my, my channel is much older than that. My channel, uh, I started in like 2011 with the first video being like in 2013, somewhere around there. I didn't start making tutorial videos in earnest until 2019. And as you can see, this video has a lot of views and a lot of likes. And I, so I, I firmly appreciate that. But I've gotten a lot of comments over the last five years <laughs> about updating these videos. For one thing, the quality at 1080p is a pretty rough. Um, if we go up to settings here, we, we're only at 720p and you can't go any higher than that. And so I've gotten comments that, you know, it's hard to read the output. Also, it's on my old work computer, which was a Windows computer. You can see that I've got like everything uh, associated with my college there. And I kind of want to replace uh, this old tutorial, which is great, but it is 21 minutes long. So let's update that and see what we can do. So I've got a, a completely fresh Excel workbook here that we're going to work with. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're updating just the bar graph. So we're just going to make a single bar graph chart, or in this case, technically a column chart, but we're going to add error bars and we're going to do all of that. So you know how to do the, um, the process to make these graphs look like they should be APA style, right? So let's go ahead and set up the data. So I'm going to use the data from the original video, and it is simply putting labels on whether or not somebody wants a PhD or they don't want a PhD and how many hours per week they work. And then we also have our standard errors for each of those means. And you can start anywhere you want on this because it doesn't really matter. This is not a raw data file. I would either open up another sheet down here. So sheet one is your raw data. Sheet two is now your graph uh, worksheet or you can open up a completely new workbook like I've done right here. I've got book one, right? So either way, separate files, separate worksheets. It doesn't really matter. Just work with a clean file. And I've increased the, let's increase it to 150% so everyone can see. And we've got the great uh, 1080p recording and then go from there. All right. So we want to set up our data with yes, PhD and no. Oh, that's Bo. No, P, uh, a, H, D, right? And so these are going to be our means again. This is people who want to pursue a PhD, don't want to pursue a PhD, they're undergraduates, and how many hours per week do they work? I have a mean for no, for yes, PhD as 3.65. Uh, that's how many hours of work, uh, of work they work a week, right, outside of school. And then uh, no PhD is 10.39. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my standard error line here. And this value is going to be 1.17. And this value is going to be 2.44. Okay. So this is again, hours per week, they work outside of school. And then these are their standard errors, which are two values that we're going to come back to when we are finished making the graph. Sample sizes in each of these groups are fairly similar. Uh, yes, PhD has 20 people in it and no PhD has 18 people in it. We don't necessarily need that information. You might want to include that in your report of course, where the graph goes. So we're going to highlight this uh, set of data. Uh, set of information and then we're going to go up to insert okay it might be a little bit different on a, a windows excel and if we go back to the thing here there is still an insert so yeah there you go i keep going the wrong thing okay so we're here in insert and we are going to select this chart uh button which as you can see the tooltip says column that's what we want um you don't need to go through recommended charts because it's just going to pull up different charts like this do you want a uh, bar chart do you want a pie chart do you want a uh clustered bar bars go horizontal columns go up and down but we're going to go to columns just and then we're going to go to a 2d column and the clustered column now clustered columns work when you have multiple rows of data or multiple columns of data that refer to the same thing or of course only going to have two bars here uh two or two columns so these are the 3d ones these are the bars and so this is the horizontal version of this one i think just apa it doesn't really matter when we're talking about um, just quantities, I think intuitively people like to see things go from the ground, which represents zero uh, up to some kind of level. So let's go ahead and click on that. And here we go. We have our updated chart and I'm going to make it super big to fill up our screen here, fill up our so we can play around with it. We are going to change the font sizes and everything like that. So let's start with formatting this chart. First thing is first APA graphs do not have titles. So I'm going to click on that. All right, we're going to click on that chart title and you can hit delete backspace, uh, forward delete, whatever delete you want. You can click that and it goes away. The other way you can do this is through the add chart element button here. OK, and down here with chart title, you can click none and it will get rid of it. When you hit delete, it will go to none. As you can see, it's got 
uh, it checked here, right? Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of these grid lines. These horizontal grid lines are on by default as the maximum value here, okay? So we're going to get rid of these grid lines. We don't want primary major horizontal. So you can see that it's checked. Well, how do we get rid of them? There is no, like there was in chart title, none. Why is there no none here? Excel wants you to either have them checked for on or unchecked for off. So we're just going to click on this again to uncheck it. Let me go back in here to show you that it's unchecked now, right? And there they are. They are gone. Perfect. OK, we can change the color of the bars to I hope blue is useful for all of my viewers, um, whether or not you have colorblindness, colorblindness or not. There we go. I think I want to go ahead and do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at blue. OK, the next thing I want to do is I want to focus on my X axis here. We're just going to kind of go in order. So usually I get rid of the chart title first, then I get rid of the grid lines. I think I may have done that in a slightly different order in the previous video. Now I'm going to work on the X axis and then we will finish up with the Y axis on formatting this bar chart. So let's go ahead and double click on this axis here, right? So the yes PhD and the no PhD are coming from these two labels. And that is if we click on labels, we see it is automatically marked as automatic. Leave it like that. So whatever you want these bars to be named, name them in the cells as you want them to be named. And that's the best strategy, because otherwise you're just going to be um, messing around with specifying intervals and all of that. And you kind of don't want to change all of these with like different text options and all of that. So we're just going to go ahead and let the labels be what are in the cells, which is really important. However, they're not that big. So we want to make this chart readable. Imagine you are making this chart for a poster at a conference, right? A poster session at a conference. You want your graphs to be visible from a good distance away, right? So if somebody's just kind of walking through, uh, they see your graph, it doesn't matter how big these bars are. It really doesn't. What you want to make clear is what people are looking at, right? So you want to make it so this is good. It is good to read. So one rule of thumb is um, for every foot, you want to increase for every foot of reading distance, you want to increase the uh, font size like five or something like that. I don't so if you if you know the exact rule, go ahead and put it down in the comment section below. But you want to make this size bigger. So we're, we're, we're going to change this. So we're going to go to home. And as you can see that it's it's picking Aptos narrow. I'm not entirely sure why um, uh, Aptos narrow is the font selection. But you can see that it's nine. And I can see in my preview window for this recording, uh, it's small. I can barely see that looking at my my recording preview. So let's go ahead and increase that to at least 14. And you can see, oh, there we go. Yes, PhD and no PhD gets much bigger. Um, we can bold it if we want to. Uh, bold, there we go. We can bold it if we want to. I don't think that's necessary, but I don't want Aptos Narrow. It's a great sans serif font, that's fine. But I also want to use what is uh, used sort of throughout the internet world and printing world. And Arial is a great choice to change because it's great for dyslexia. It's a sans serif font, so there's no extra accoutrement on these letters, right? Uh, and the kerning is clear. Right? We had Aptos Narrow, which sort of put all of these letters really close together. That kerning is really close. Arial has a good set of spacing between its letters. So I think this is a solid choice for our font, font and font size, Arial 14 throughout. OK, the next thing I want to do while I have this open is uh, it's hard to tell now, but the axis line is about the same color as this selection line. It's like this light gray. I like my axes to be clear black. So I am going to go and make sure that I've got my tick marks set from one and none and none because we don't need tick marks for our X axis. And then we're going to go up to the paint bucket to get a line. Right. And as you can see, the line is this color. I don't want the line to be that color. I want it to be black. So when I click off of it, it is clearly a black line. And then we can increase the if we click on it again, we can increase the width of it to make it. Uh, let's make it a full point thick. OK, there we go. Clear a clearly black line to demarcate where the x-axis is. Wonderful. So that is formatting the x-axis. Okay. Let's do the y-axis now. Y-axis needs a lot of help. One last thing for the x-axis before we move on is we got to go up to uh, chart design and we got to go to add chart element and we're going to do axis titles. Okay. So you can see we have primary horizontal and primary vertical. Primary horizontal is going to pop up and it's going to be axis title here. It's in nine font Aptos narrow, right? So we're going to change that. So we double click um, or triple click to collect the whole thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this to career aspiration like I did in the original video career aspiration. Wonderful. So I'm going to click on that again just so I have it selected and then I am going to go to home. And I'm going to choose Arial and then I'm going to choose 14. It was sorry, it was it was 10, not nine. Right. So yes, PhD, no PhD. Career aspiration is our choice. Right. Wonderful. So I clicked off the chart. Let's go ahead and click back on it. Now we got to do the Y axis. The Y axis needs a lot of work. So let's click on the Y axis. OK, so first and foremost, we don't have uh, a line. 
and it, it's supposed to be this dark gray color. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to making it at this dark black here in just a second. What I want to do first is go to the axis options. So as you can see here, it's doing, you know, automatic um, numbering, and that's fine. You can change that here through axis options. Uh, 12 is an automatic number. We can change that to 11 if we want to. Um, you can see that it's doing every twos. And if we had any minor, it would do every point four. Well, no, we don't need that. So we're going to go ahead and um, leave all of these as default. Uh, sometimes Excel does know best. But what we want now, which makes it easier for people to read when we go through, is to add tick marks. And really, what we're going to do is add tick marks only to the major type. And you've got three choices. You've got inside, which is inside the line, which currently doesn't exist. But if it did, it would be on the inside of the line, outside of the line only, or across the line. So both inside and outside together. I usually do just outside. You're free to choose whatever you'd like. There's no rule about it in APA. So I'm going to choose outside. And as you can see, it adds the tick marks. But if I click off the graph, it added the line. It added the line. So that is all we need to actually get the tick marks. And so if we go back to the axis options, double click on it, sorry, um, and we go to uh, the fill, it changed it to black. And to match it with my uh, x axis, I'm going to just go ahead and increase the width to one point. All right. So it's a one point font width, and it looks exactly like I want it to. Now, don't worry about the fonts being not black. That's uh, that the color of the font being not black. You can change those if you want. I'm not as, as concerned about that in the long run. The last thing I need to do for this scale itself, you know, not changing any of these other options here, is I'm going to go to uh, home and change this like I did to Arial and 14. And as you can see, it'll just make the numbers bigger and it'll smudge them over on the graph. Look at that. Look how much easier that graph is to read. Wonderful. So one more thing for the Y axis itself, and that is to go to chart design, add chart element, axis title, primary vertical. And it'll again, it'll smudge the graph over. We have plenty of unused space around here, so it doesn't even matter. And we're going to triple click on that. And we are going to go ahead and put in hours spent, oops, oh boy, spent working outside of school. There's probably a better way to, to, to write that, uh, considering that I did a terrible job typing right there. Hours spent working outside of school. Wonderful. I'll triple click on that. And let's go over here to change this to Arial and 14. Look at that. Now, it didn't need that much more room. So as soon as I was done with it, it smudged it over just a little bit imperceptibly. OK, so there we go. There's our graph. But it is missing one thing that we haven't talked about yet, and that is the standard errors right here. So let's go ahead and figure that out. There are a couple of ways that you can get there, right? We can go to chart design and we can go to add chart element and we can go to error bars. We can double click on the bars themselves and it'll give us uh, the data series format. But then we can um, oh, maybe. Oh, you know what it is? They, they changed that. I used to be able to double click on this to get error bars. OK, that's fine. So ignore that. <laughs> so we're going to go to add chart element and we go to error bars here, right? Because you can't add it any other way. As far as I'm aware, they changed this and they don't have um, the ability to add it here unless um, change chart type. No, no. You used to be able to add error bars when these were selected. So you don't have to actually have them selected anymore. You just have the chart selected, OK? Um, because if we go here, we've got size and properties. That's just how this looks itself. So let's go to chart design. Add chart element error bars. And we have none. Oops, we have none. We have standard error. Oh, that looks nice. Maybe we should do standard error. Uh, 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 these are custom error bars because standard error is trying to calculate the error, standard error from data that you have in a sheet. So we can't use that. Same thing with percentage and standard deviation. These things are being calculated from data. No, we want more error bar options, more error bar options. So we can open that up and it'll bring up the format error bars here. OK, format error bars. And we've got the actual options. We've got the shape and we've got their fill. So by default, they're this gray line. We're going to go ahead and change them to black. So they stand out from the blue bars that we've got here. But then we're going to go back here to our options. So you have three options that you have to manage um, the end cap or the end cap and the direction. So by default, both is selected or you can do just minus or you can do just plus. And it's weird that it's doing it like that, <laughs> maybe for um, positive bar or bar charts, really. So generally speaking, in APA, you want to do leave it on the radio button here of both as default. Let's go ahead and do that. The end cap is either no cap or cap, right? So cap really gives it a hard edge. No cap doesn't really give it a hard edge. There is no formatting requirement for this. So that is the end style. So that is uh, a personal choice that you have. You can go ahead and choose whatever you want. I usually do caps. OK, and then you have to put in your error amount, right? So what is what do we do? So fixed value is always comes up by default and it's choosing two for some reason. One tech tends to be what we want to use percentage. As I said, we don't want to use that standard deviation. Again, we don't want to use that. And then standard error. When I click on standard error, look what happens. It's like changing some standard error value um, into something massive. This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So our last option here is to use custom. We have to use custom error bars. And by default, 
It's choosing one, but we're going to go ahead and specify these values. What it does is it brings up these custom, this custom error bar dialog box and uh, with the ability to choose our cells, right? So if I go here, you can see that the cell is, has this light green selection and anywhere I go, it is wanting to choose that. So this is highlighted equals one. And what we're going to do is we're going to click and hold and slide, and it's going to do sheet one D 10, and it's not going to change that. And it's not going to change to E 10 either. And what that's going to do is you're going to change the positive side of this error bar. And it knows that since it's in the same order that you're making Excel assume that 1.17 goes with yes, PhD, this 3.65 bar, this one right here, and 2.44 goes with the 10.39 or this bar, right? So make sure your standard errors are in the same format. You'll see in the other videos where we have like a two by two factorial design that we want to make sure that we go ahead and set it up in the same grid like function. Uh, or, or structure, right? Um, now, so as soon as I click away from here, you're going to see the error bars change in size. Oh, no, I have to click OK first. N I hit tab to move over to the next one. You can slide, uh, you can click on it and uh, highlight it. Make sure this is highlighted so it gets replaced because if you do this equals and then you choose the um, thing, it'll come up with an error and that's not good. So either tab or select and highlight. So negative values uh, for standard errors typically are the same values. So we're going to click and slide over again, it gives me the same thing. You can copy and paste this over like I can click on this and then hit copy and then hit paste, you know, that kind of thing. We can do that many ways to do it. Just make sure that it's this that these things are the same. And then we're going to click OK. And there you go. 2.44 from 10 is um, about 13. And as you can see, it added 14 up there because the end cap is much higher. And if I click away, you can see now that we have the end caps in place. They're nice, clear black. We know where these two means are uh, ending as far as precision goes and all of that. So if we go ahead and close our, our chart area, now we have an APA style chart. And as I change the size of it, it will change its features, right? It, but it will always look the same. Look at that. All right. So that's how you make an APA style bar chart in Excel updated for 2024, five years later. Hope it looks good for you. Let me know if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions down in the comment section below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.